Hello you lovely lot, it's Gran here with another episode of Vintage Story from the Rusty Gear server. Now then, I've grabbed a load of feathers because I want to make my angel belt. Here it is. Look! Oh. Right then, I think I've got everything that I might need. I probably haven't, but I'm hopeful that I have. So I'm off to my build site and I'm going to talk about what I'm going to build, what I've got in my head, what I'm hoping to transfer into a build. Right. Here we are. And I bet you're wondering why I didn't just fly here. Now I've got an angel belt. Well, I'm hoping to just use my angel belt for when I build. That's what I'm hoping. But I can imagine once I get used to it, I might not stop using it. But we can hope. Right, let me just put something here so I can... Whoops. I can lean my... Oh, against. I've got to have two blocks high. Put that there. Right then, I'm going to unpack. Here we go. Nice. I think I'll just put this down there. Okay, so I've done a bit of unpacking. And I'm just wondering where to put this. I'm, I might just sacrifice that chest there and put it in that corner. There we go. Nice. And I have a new rune somewhere. Where have I put it? Not that one. Uh, here. There we go. And it's a steel one, thanks to 8-digit. So I'm just going to click on this. Grand's build. There we go. Nice. So now I can get home and I can get to here if I've forgotten anything. And I'm sure I have. Now then, this is the bit. I wanted to get up there and to have a look on top of that mountain. Because I don't know what it's like. I really don't. There we go. We close this door. Now then, that's it. Look at that. I'm flying. Oh my goodness. Right. Let us go up and have a look. Now, I'm hopeful that there's some land in them there mountains. Because if there isn't, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do this. Uh, and there's going to be an awful lot more work than I, than I wanted. Whoa. Oh, I'm in the clouds. <gasps> look. Oh, look at that. Oh, that is awesome. Oh, I can see a wolf down there. Oh, Oh, I can't see a thing when I'm in the clouds. Oh, look at this. It's all at different levels, which is fantastic. Because all the buildings that I'm going to put in here will be at different levels as well. So, nice by a wolf. Okay, we'll have to watch out for those. I can only see one, though. Yep, he sees me. Okay. But that is, that is really cool. Look at this. Nice. Well, the picture I've got in my head has been influenced by Rivendell from J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. It's not going to be a replica of Rivendell by any means at all. But I just love the arches. I love all the stonework. I love the architecture. I really do. And the organic forms in the decor. Really, really nice. A sort of a, um, a joining of Art Nouveau and the Celtic architecture. I love it. I love it all. So that's what I'm planning. I haven't got a written plan or anything drawn or anything like that. Uh, this is going to develop as we go along. And I'm hoping, I'm, I'm just hoping, if you get a sense of Rivendell or that type of architecture, then I think I've, I've been successful. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. So this area down here where my tent is, until I get to build down here, is going to be a farming area, basically, to sustain me while I'm building. Right, I've been doing a bit of work. And as you can see, I've got a little path along here. I've got um, the Night Watcher over there, so I'm hoping he's going to keep me safe on this bit. I've got a little bridge over here because I got fed up of uh, jumping over the water and missing. And then I've got my farm. 
Mmm, that doesn't look too healthy, does it? What's going on there? Growth stunted due to heat. Crop damage by nearby salt water. Oh! Was that a thing? I didn't know that was a thing. Just let me have a look at these piggies a minute. Because I have been feeding them. I've only got two in there. A boar and a sow. But that's all it takes to start, doesn't it, really? So that's the boar there. And... Oh, the sow is pregnant. That's smashing. Okay, that's good. I need to get this water out, don't I? Because I did dip my bucket in the sea to fill those up. So those need to come out. Oh dear. Now I'm hoping just to use one of these ponds. And hopefully that's not salt water. That should be okay, shouldn't it? I mean, the sea's over there. So I'm hoping... This water's okay. I well, I didn't know. I didn't know that about seawater. That it was different to any other water in Vintage Story. So it just says 10 litres of water. So I'm hoping that's all I need. So let's pop this back. And see if it makes any difference. I'm sure I've made farms next to sea. Let's have a look. Pop you in there. There we go. Oh yes, look. It's reverting back. Oh, phew. I must have only ever made farms near lakes. You know, in early game, when that's the only place you've got water? Yeah, I never knew about the salt water. Wow. Now, I've been taking a long look at this mountain and what's around it. And... There's views all, all around, well, on most sides of it. Um, but I, th I feel the better view is on the east side. This northeast side is mostly sea. Nothing much to look at there. But when you come round to this side, this southern side of the east side of the mountain, if you know what I mean, um, there's a lot going on and I think this area is absolutely gorgeous and so I'm going to start my build around this area and I feel like the first thing I want to build is a bridge and I'm looking somewhere around here although I haven't quite I haven't quite settled on the point but if you can imagine that there's going to be buildings down here and looking from the bridge down, that would be awesome. And then the sea beyond. And also, this is where the sun rises in the morning. So, yeah, there's a reflection of the sun on the sea. So, coming along the bridge first thing in the morning and seeing a sunrise, if you're early enough, would be fantastic, I think. So, yeah, so the bridge is going gonna, gonna to have this outlook. So, I need to get this right, really. And this side, I mean, there, there are things to look at, things to see. And that there'll be buildings around here as well. But, yeah, but I'm going to start on the other side. I'm going to start around this side. And I'm thinking, I'm not quite sure whether this bit's going to stay there. Depends if it impedes the view, because I haven't found the right height to build from yet. I keep dipping down and wondering. And looking and seeing what it would look like if a bridge were at this height or further down. There's certainly a lot of scope, I think, for doing all sorts here. So it's going to be quite an adventure I think and I'm really looking forward to it and I hope you'll come along on this adventure with me and see how I get on I want this view all around there to be seen from this bridge so I need to place it quite carefully so I'm going to have a dabble and I'm going to place a few markers and then I've got to make a decision 
Now I've done a bit of exploration around this area and I have made a few discoveries but I'm going to leave the discoveries to show you in a separate video. And of course you'll all know by now that we raided the Resonance Archives as well last week and I'm going to leave that for a separate video as well. So two videos coming up. What I have been doing is focusing on the first part of my build. Now as I mentioned I'm planning on building a bridge first and I've placed a few blocks down as markers so I can have a look and see how it would look. I think the height, this height here is too high so I'm going to get rid of this one. For me it's most important that I have a good view from this so that's why I'm taking my time over this bit. So I'm left with this one that was underneath and I'm but I'm still not entirely happy with that either. I think it needs to be smaller and this here I've taken some trees off this to see how it would look without the trees on and whether I could use it as some kind of support but it just isn't in the right place so I think it'll have to go. Yeah I made the decision and I'm using the quarry mod to actually retain as much of this granite as possible because I'm anticipating that besides taking some things down I'll probably need to build some things up or fill some things in so I want to retain as much of this granite as possible because of course the mountain is all granite. Right so that is looking like it's always been there I think. So I've taken all the markers out now because I have decided where this bridge is going to go and it's going to go through this thin sliver of mountain here. If I just come round here you can see how thin that is. So there's going to be a little tunnel there and the bridge is going to start from an opening on this flat edge of this part of the mountain here. I think that is going to be the best place for it. So I'm going to start by placing some dirt on here. Probably let's just do that here. Right now I did dig out a tunnel earlier. Where was that? Um, let me see. Oh yeah, there it is, look. Let's just go around the back. There's a little waterfall here and I'm thinking I'd like it on the other side of that. But I'm just going to put some dirt back there so I can compare the difference that it will make. Yeah, I think... Yeah, I think I'd like to move that along. I really would. I'd like it to go in through there, I think. So, on the other side, maybe right over here, because I can make the tunnel as wide as I want to. And I think it'd be cool to get a little glimpse of the bridge coming out of this side as well, and then going back in. Now, just a little bit, I think. Yeah, I'm on 172. I need to be on 171, don't I? Let me just put that up there. And then, oh, I'm running out of dirt. I'm going to have to go and get some more. Just put that in there. And where's my pick? So I'll just need to chop a little bit of this out. Yep, I need more dirt. I'm just taking a stack of this with me. That'll do. Right, let's go and dig that tunnel. Oops, just pop that dirt in there. And then... There we go. There's that other bit of dirt. I just need to marry them up now. There 
There we go. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like that size. That makes sense to me. Okay, let's get rid of this and fill this in. My first thought of material for this build was chalk stone. And I'm sticking to that as the basic material for most of these builds. So we need to go and get ourselves a lot of chalk. And I know just where there is some. There we are, back home. Nice. Right, let's just see. Here we go. That's the uh, that's the chalk there. Yeah, and that's that's where I took my first bit of chalk. Let me pin that, and then we'll head there. Well, I've just had to warm myself up because I got a bit chilly. It's minus seven over here, and I'd totally forgotten that. Let me take that off, and then we can get digging. I'll just start somewhere out of the way. Maybe it's here under this tree. We need to get under this sand. So, let's have a look. Oops, it is there. I think that might be far enough. Let's just pop this over the top. So I can get underneath it and then I can make it a safe area. There we go. There we go. Safe. Okay, just need to dig down now. far enough down so I can quarry with my iron splitters that's it okay I need to get up and put the splitters on top now right I should be able to get these six along here that's it and they should be lined up I think with those down there I think Oops. There we go. First block quarried. Nice. I'm trying to collect as much of this cracked chalk as well because I think that will come in very handy for texturing. I'm hoping I have enough for the bridge at least. Just taking my torches back. I should be able to find that quite easy when I come back again. Nice. Right, let me get organised and we'll start. Now I've been trying out the shape of the bridge I'm using dirt because obviously I don't want to be breaking down the chalk if I use it and it's wrong. And I've gone for a curved one. I don't know whether it's going to stay curved because it depends how I design the roof and whether I can cope with going round a curve with it. Because I do want quite an intricate roof. But we'll see. So I'm just going to lay the chalk on top of this to start with. Now I have been off since and made some mortar to make some chalk bricks and I had a thought of putting it on the edges here but then I decided against it and this is just going to be all chalk for the time being and I'm trying to get this shape right it may involve a bit of chiselling let me just put these on here five across and the shape's looking not too bad I think it's not an even right angle so one side is longer than the other so that makes it a little bit problematic but I think I could smooth off those and make a nice curve on there 
And with the pantograph, um, that shouldn't be too difficult with the single blocks in the middle. So let's remove this and see what we get. There we go. I think for that to make sense I'll have to build that up with some granite and make this granite bit taller I think. I want it to look like it's well supported under here so I'm going to try and make some supports for underneath now and hopefully it will make sense. I just have to get the right size I think for underneath. Try that. And I need the same for over here. Oh, this little bit will have to go, I think. And I'll do the same on this side. Now then, I think I might need that to come down some more, I think. Right, let me have a look at that. it wasn't it uh, one two three four five six seven eight I think that was right one two three four five six seven eight yep right let's stand back and have a look at that This, that needs to go up quite a lot, I think. Quite a lot. How tall do we need these arches? I think they need to be quite tall, don't they? I think they do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe. Let's have a look. What's that look like, perspective wise? Let's have a look. That's not too bad, actually. That is not too bad at all. I need to build this side up so it's the same, I think. Who's been getting on my bed? Horrid thing. Right, let's have a look. That is not too bad at all. Not too bad. I quite like that look. just make this a little bit more robust I think First of the curvy bits in this build, nearly done on this one, and I just have to transfer it onto the other one then. There we go. Nice. Okay, let me just get this one off. Like that. 
And that's that one done. Ooh. Very dark when I go away from the build. But I want to... I don't want to sleep every night because just time's a wasting. And time's going by on the server, so... Yeah. I'm going to work where I can as long as I can show you what I'm doing. So now I'm going to try and curve this. And for these single blocks here, I'm going to use the pantogram, which um, will make it much quicker. But from the longer bits on the side, I'm going to have to chisel that singly. Right. Hmm. Well, now I've done that, I can't say that I'm excited about that shape at all. I'm, I'm really not sure about that shape. Again, I think it's because it's longer on one side than the other. It's not like a proper quarter circle, is it, really? But I'm going to do the other side anyway and see if that makes any difference to whether I like it or not. Well, I'm going to continue on and these are the shape of the pillars. There's going to be pillars around both sides of the bridge, of course. And once I've done this one, I can use the pantogram to copy it over to the other pillars. I think that'll do. Looks good. Okay. I think I'll have it alternate blocks and all the way around now this is going to be a bit of a problem already this curve I'm already regretting doing the curve I must say because yeah I'm gonna to have to chisel these separately so that it looks like it's it's continuing around the edge yeah, I think I'll just put some dirt where I want those pillars to go. Um, need to space them. Probably there. Hmm. Yeah, this is this is going to be a bit awkward there. Uh, hmm. Okay, I'm going to leave a space there. Oh, and that... Oh dear. This is problematic, because I want a space there. So I'll... S I'll put another one there. That doesn't look too bad, actually. There's a bit more of a space there. Okay, we'll... we'll, we'll look at that again when when it when it comes to it i want to see what these look like first so that's going to go there i'm gonna right i'm not sure if it matters exactly where you take the picture i mean i chiseled it from the top but i've taken a picture from the top so i'll do the same on here to reproduce it and i found it doesn't really matter where you point your cursor to reproduce the block because it's the whole block that's changing, I think. So, I can do this quite quickly. Okay, those are all in. I've done the individual ones on the curve and I've added an extra block, so they're five. Two, three, four, five, yeah. Now I want to do the roof. And I want a specific shape for the roof um, I want it to be curved and I want the pattern in it to have curves as well so that's going to make it quite complicated but I'm going to have a go and see how it comes out right let's see how I get on with this then I wanted this roof to be quite delicate. I wanted it to have intricate patterns and I wanted it to be flowing um, and I wanted it to have a peak in the middle. 
So I took some time over this bit because I knew I'd be able to use the pantograph to actually copy it over. So I needed to get this bit right as well. Once I got that to how I wanted it, I started off taking the excess on the outside. I did want this to be a very thin, very delicate roof, quite with a, with a, a sort of a lacy feel to it. And needless to say, this sort of chiselling meant that I needed quite a few tools. So I shamelessly took advantage of the invitation 8-digit had extended to me to use any of his materials that I needed. And the meteoric iron was quite an upgrade to my iron ones and the stack looked like it needed a little bit of whittling down. I had only intended to make four chisels but I hadn't realised that I could actually make two out of one ingot so I ended up with eight. Nice. Thank you very much for that eight digit. That was an enormous help. It did take long and I was soon back chiselling away. So I think I was quite happy with that shape and now it was time to apply a design and I'd been dabbling about with one on paper. It was at this point I used the pantogram to replicate the shape that I'd made onto another block so that I could take it with me into my tent and be a little bit more protected from the elements. Now, I wouldn't want that on all of them. We only want those on the ones that are on the pillars. So there would be these for the ones on the pillars and other ones without this extra piece on it. I decided I need a whole panel to be able to create this design effectively. So then I could use the pantograph to transfer it over. That essentially was it on one side. I thought it might be easier to do the other side of the top whilst it was actually in place. So I broke it down to take it up to the bridge. Now 
nice. I really like the way that was looking. Need to put an extra bit in there. There we go. It's quite satisfying, actually, placing all the pieces on. And then the top bit. And then the top bit. I'd made the mistake of including a tiny bit of a block below. So I dispensed with that and actually created another little bit of the pattern. So it used the block above. In the end, I took it back down because I couldn't see what I was chiseling because everything was white. I needed a darker background. And then it was a matter of just transferring these over. Because the bottom two would more or less be the same on each side. I need to remember that the pieces on top of the pillars were a little bit different. But that doesn't mean to say I could put all the blocks in. I just have to be careful and make sure all the right bits went in the right places. This was hard to see, but it was night time and it was snowing. Now getting to this stage highlighted a bit of a problem. Because I'd made such an intricate design on the roof, I was now quite worried about this diagonal bit. And I think I might have overstretched myself for this bit. So I had to have a think about what I was going to do. Well, after a long debate about what to do with this section, I decided it would be better if I actually made it a square bit, a corner bit, rather than a diagonal bit. It didn't take long to take it down and actually apply this corner bit here. And of course everything else was chiselled, so it's just a matter of putting it back. And then what was left was the corner pieces and I would have to do those by hand. So I did as much as I could, put as many blocks in as I could and use the pantograph as much as I could. And I ended up with three pieces on the outside and three pieces on the inside that would have to do further chiselling on. I did have one major concern and that was did this look like it could hold itself up or did I really need to give it some more support? The corner pieces were quite intricate and I needed to keep as much as possible to the design on either side but they weren't going to be exactly the same because they were on the diagonal and in the end it came out okay. I had no glaring holes and I kept I kept it consistent with the, the curved lines and the circles on either side.
And that's the roof bit finished. Just my luck for it to be atrocious weather, snowing and misty. But the bridge wasn't finished yet. I needed to design some balustrades for it. I chiselled the balustrade in between two of the columns and then I took all three pieces down to the tent. And this was the closest I could get to a design for a balustrade that was actually featured in Rivendell. I only needed two of these bits actually because the middle bit was going to be replicated as it was and then I only needed one of the columns because that would be the same for all of them. But once I was satisfied with it, I took it up to the bridge with my trusty pantograph. And when I broke the second column, it was nice to see that it stacked. So they were exactly the same. I quite like the look of that. And I couldn't honestly think of how I was going to support it in this middle bit. just had the corners to chisel. Those of course I had to do by hand. There was an external corner and an internal one. And once I'd done those the bare bones of the bridge was actually done. So I think that's enough chiseling for this week. I'm going to call it an episode there. I'm going to try and get those two other videos I mentioned early on out as soon as I can. The one about what I found when I explored this area and the other one that gives you my perspective of exploring the Resonance Archive. So take care everybody and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye bye.